five, four, three, two, one. Please do not change channel. From Krypton Radio, brought to you by Famous Faces and Funnies and Off the Chain with Yvonne Mason. It's the Hangin' With Web Show Radio Hour. The Internet's premier pop culture talk radio show. You're tuned in, you're logged on, and now, your host, award-winning author and journalist G.W. Pomacher. Who are you hanging with? Hello, World Wide Web. Welcome to the Hanging With Web Show Radio Hour. I'm G.W. Vomiter. And I'm Sagea. And we are in the studio this week. We are having a great time. Uh, it's been an awesome week, man. I have to say it has been. We have, we've got so much stuff going on right now. We have IndyCon 2019 coming up. That's going to be so much fun. It's going to be absolutely amazing. I can't wait. Uh, we're going to be out there interviewing authors, filmmakers, musicians, right off the stage. I mean, they're going to come right from the stage performing their set and sit in their sweaty bodies in our nice chairs. Oh, how fun. That's okay. They're leather chairs. That's true. That's true. Because I've got like, a towel. That's good. That's awesome. Yeah, we are so excited about what's coming up at IndyCon 2019. Um, but you know what? We've had – it's been an adventure the last few weeks as we have caught up on some amazing interviews we have been to uh, the film screening and premiere of Maybelline, Molly, and Me. Yes. And we got to talk to the actors and actresses and, and the film producer and director right there at the screening. It was amazing. Um, and all to raise funds for charity. That's exactly right. Which is awesome. Um, and so before that, obviously, we started editing and the editing process for our Megacon footage. Megacon. That's right. And uh, and we're catching up with our International Christian Film and Music Festival coverage that we did just a few weeks ago. So we've got more filmmakers and more musicians coming up, too. And also, later this month, we uh-huh. have Space Coast Book Lovers, so we'll catch up with some, oh, some more yeah. authors. Oh, man. I mean, so it's been a great, busy, uh, crazy make in time here at the Hanging With Web Show. And it's great. So if you get a chance, guys, we hope you'll go over and to th- go to the YouTube channel. Go to the Hanging With Web Show on YouTube. Uh, or just go to HangingWithShow.com. That's H-A-N-G-I-N with show.com. Yeah, she loves doing that. So, uh, yeah, go to the HangingWithShow.com. Catch up on our video. So subscribe to the channel. We have all kinds of content coming for you. It's great. We're going to share some of our interviews with you here on Krypton Radio. Uh, tonight, which is going to be great. We've got some interviews. We've got interviews with uh, science fiction uh, licensee, you could say. Um, he's really a spinoff author, Keith DeCandido, who is, uh, been he's been writing in the Alien universe. He's been writing in Star Trek universe. He's written in the Supernatural universe. All of the universes. All of the universes. Keith Dandito, uh, uh, D. Candido is with us uh, tonight, uh, talking about you know what it's like to be a licensed author in these huge franchises. Yes, and how he continues those stories that That's we right. want more of. And, yeah, and how and, you know how he gets deeper into the characters, more character development. He gives fans more of the things that they love. So we're going to talk to Keith tonight. We're also going to talk to comic creator and hanging with Web Show alum Alex Bonilla. Bonilla. Bania. That's right, Bania. Uh, Alex uh, of AB Comics, who is responsible for the comic series, the Antioch comic. Yes. Now, what's great about that is we caught up with Alex at Megacon, and this interview was too good to wait. It was too good for us to wait for the video show. Yes, because he brings his comics to life at Megacon. Really brings them to life. We, we had cosplayers in the chair talking about each character in the Antioch comic as they brought that character to life. It was awesome. It was amazing. Uh, you know, if you've been to a convention, you know there's a thing it's what's referred to as a booth babe, which is essentially a, a cosplayer who's there to bring a character to life or to draw attention for your art. And Alex brought them all. He brought the men. He brought the women. He brought the characters to life in front of the booth. And he brought them all down 
and set them all on the chair, and it was awesome. It really was. It really was. So uh, we had we had characters like Incinerate. That's true. We had that's right. We had Kunai and Kunai, Samia. Samia. Yeah, I want to tell you, Kunai. Wow. He was. He was. I had oh, somebody we got to go through this every time. I had somebody standing Always behind again, me. Always again, we have to go through this. Yes, yes, Look, yes. Look, it was not my fault. I have he, no abs. I know it. It's okay. He was in this tiny little. Wow. It was yeah. really nice. It, yeah. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> and we had Samilia and Electricidad. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, these are the characters from the anti comic series. They sat in the chair hanging out with their creator, uh, Alex Bonilla. And it was an amazing interview. We hope you guys enjoy that. Um, and then we're going to wrap it up with one of our favorite people, Hanging With Web Show alum, also Hanging With Web Show co-producer uh, on uh, the short-lived uh, CW Watchtower, which is going to be uh, rebranded. Kevin is going to relaunch as the uh, Geeks Watchtower. Yes. And yes. keep it, your ears he's, out he's for really, that. Because he wants to expand what he covers, not just CW shows, but he wants to expand – into the greater DC universe. He's a DC fan. He's also the fantasy author responsible for the Rasanani series. Oh, I love uh, that. If you love dragons, yeah. let me tell you. That's right. Dragons, baby. Yes. And uh, Winters of Al- Alora. Yes, that's his Alora. new one. Alora. That's right. That is that. That is his new one. Um, we got to talk to Kevin, catch up a little bit. Uh, he's been traveling. But we also talked a little bit about his um, uh, wrestling too. Oh, yes, with the UWA Elite. That's he right. Is, he's he wrestles with the UWA Elite. Uh, guys, we're not going to waste any more time. We're going to dive into this episode. Yes. We have to go to a commercial break. When we come back, we are going to be chatting with someone. Ooh. Who? Keith DiCandido. Keith. That's right. When we come back, we're going to be hanging with Keith DiCandido. All right. So stay tuned in and stay logged on, and we'll be right back. Famous Faces and Funnies in Melbourne, Florida is leading the way in pop culture fun. From comic books and graphic novels to Funko Pops and collector's items, Famous Faces and Funnies has it all. Rick Shea and the professional team at Famous Faces and Funnies are friendly and knowledgeable. Whether you're looking for toys, props, collector treasures, or a new comic book, Famous Faces and Funnies is your one-stop shop. To find Famous Faces and Funnies on Facebook and Twitter, just type at FFF Comics. Who's who, what's hot, and what's not? 2019 saw some amazing new creative talents, and now you can peek behind the scenes at the hottest indie creative artists in this year's edition of 25 Hottest Indie Authors, Artist Advocates 2019 Magazine. Published by the renowned And I Thought Ladies, this is a -a one-of-a-kind look into the brightest rising stars in the creative universe. Get yours today at magcloud.com and at andwethought.com. Mature and curvaceous Juliana faces the consequences of having two online lovers, the insanely jealous Aaron and the kind, sexy, silver fox Bobby. To make her life more complicated, she must weather the wrath of her husband Rocco, who has discovered his suspicion and uncovers a deep, dark secret. And there are more secrets to uncover. Will these secrets come out? Can Juliana survive the tsunami of impossible situations? Will she be able to rebuild the life she once had? Or will the burden of the past prove too much? Is there even a happily ever after in her future? Read what happens when you pick up your copy of With All of Me Too today from joannesbooks.com or amazon.com. Are you looking for a used car? Check out the Public Auto Auction app from CarAuctionNetworks.com. You can download the app on your phone or tablet and use it for free, and there's no registration required. You can see what's for sale at car auctions, such as bank repos, dealer trade-in, surplus government vehicles, or impounds. There are plenty of cheap used cars and trucks listed in the app. You can save a lot of money with Public Auto Auction app. You can also see and bid at car auctions online. Get the Public Auto Auction app for iOS at the Apple Store. Or on Google Play. Or simply go to CarAuctionNetwork.com. That's CarAuctionNetwork.com. Network.com. Hello, World Wide Web. Welcome back to the Hanging With Web Show. I'm GW Pometer. Thank you so much for logging on, tuning in, scrolling down, clicking over Google. I don't know how they get here. <laughs> it's magic. I do not understand. But we are here nonetheless. So hit subscribe. Come back over and over again. We got artists, authors, filmmakers, musicians, talented, creative minds of all kinds. We're at MegaCon 2019 and we're hanging out with author Keith. DeCandido, the author of 
like your life, like everything <laughs> you've ever read, except I'm, we're going to tell you about alien isolation first because that's the one that Sage let us talk about. It's also the next one to come out, so. Well, that makes yeah. sense then. There yeah. was a reason to it. Yeah. I just do what I'm told, so, well, you know, I, I'm sure you understand. Yes. Yes. Okay. So, Keith, welcome to the show, man. Thank you. All right. So, make, first of all, we'll start with MegaCon 2019. Uh, you well, are, it's only Friday, and I'm already impressed with how amazing the show is. You're under the um, Bard's Tower. The crowds are good. Yes. The tower, uh, I'm here with Bard's Tower, which we, uh, Bard's Tower hosts a bunch of different, uh, authors, uh, at the, at their booth. They go from show to show with, yep. with a bunch of people. It's me, Sherilyn Kenyon, Al Going Back, Cody Martin, T. Allen Diaz, and Brian Lee Durfee. Uh, it's a good all day. Here, uh, Peddling our wares. To Peddling the, to your wares to, to the, the world. To the panting reading public. Yes. And, um, Are they panting? Are they awaiting? Are they well, coming Well, yeah, because it's crowded and there's a lot of, there's yes. a lot of, there's a big convention center, so well, they've I been try walking to around them, a lot. Turn the heat so, up yeah, over there so they sweat a lot more yeah. when they come back together so that, you know, but, they get stuck uh, but, to no, the book, they have to pay for it. Is that the kind of thing? Uh, more yeah. or less, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, you, you break it, you bought it. The, yeah. um, <laughs> but no, I mean, it, with, as, as we record this, it is only, uh, early Friday morning and the convention's only been going on for like half a day. And we've already, I've already sold out of one of my books. Uh, Congratulations. And, uh, That's uh, awesome. The others are doing well. We're going to come up with a thing as we travel the concert because I think it's good, especially for our Indian and our small press authors. Mm. We're going to declare convention bestsellers. <laughs> okay. Well, I do both. I, I, so, I do, I do small, I, my original stuff is all small and medium press publishers. Uh, I work currently with uh, eSpec Books and Plus One Press and Wordfire Press. Awesome. Um, and, uh, and a couple others as well. But, uh, and then my, my media tie-in work, including, uh, Alien Isolation, as well as my various Star Trek novels, my Supernatural novels, uh, I did an Orphan Black book last year. I've done, nice, yeah. Uh, recently I've done, uh, Sleepy Hollow, and Leverage, and Orphan Black, and a bunch of others. Those are all with larger And now, you, and now, and now, we were talking yesterday a little bit, uh, or some, one of those days where we were all on the floor doing our thing. And, um, now, and you do a lot of tie-in stuff. There's all licensed tie-in stuff. Correct. This isn't, yes. this isn't like random fanfic. This no. Is licensed no, this is actual stuff. licensed official stuff that I get paid for. That is fantastic. Um, and that is approved by the people who own the, the property. property. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So, okay. Well, let's, let's do Alien Isolation real quick. Give, let's give them the book blurb on Alien Isolation because that is the next, the, the, the most recent thing. Well, it'll be out at the end of July. Okay. Uh, it's available for pre-order now. Um, and, uh. Look for links down below, everybody. Those, yes. those links are going to be there. Um, like magic, they'll appear on the screen. They would just pop, boom. Yes. We'll fix it in post. Right anyway. Here. Uh, <laughs> oh, really? Okay. Maybe. I don't know. Anyway. It really depends. I haven't seen the shot yet. <laughs> yes. This is going to look so ridiculous. Awesome. When it's, on. The, um, it's, it's based on the video game, also called Alien Isolation, which came out in 2014. Uh, it, the main character in the video game is Amanda Ripley, who is Ellen Ripley's daughter. In the extended cut of Aliens... Wow. Uh, and, and pretty much all the home video releases at this point have this scene in it. Uh, Burke is talking to Ripley at the beginning of the movie where we find out that Ripley had a daughter who she promised to be back from the Nostromo in time for her 11th birthday. And, and she was older, right? We did get that scene by where the time, she's, yeah. By the time Ripley's actually rescued in Aliens, uh, Amanda has already grown old and died. So... Um, yeah, they have the deleted scene that you, they now yeah. put on the thing yeah, where, now you can it's, see it's where she's talking and she tells yeah. about how she looked her up. Yeah. She, yeah. yeah, and Burke, uh, Paul Reiser's character, provides her with a dossier showing that, yeah, yeah. that you know she had married somebody named McLaren and grown old. So the video game is Amanda Ripley as a 25-year-old mm. trying to find out what the hell happened to her mom. And uh, the Nostromo's flight recorder is recovered okay, and brought to a, a space station out in the Zeta Reticulite uh, region. Uh, Wayland Tutani brings her along to this station to because the the, record, the flight recorder is uh, encrypted. Uh-huh. So they have to go and they'll enter the code and then they'll find out what happened. However, by the time they get to Sevastopol Station, where it is, we find out that the people who found the flight recorder also found a face hugger. So by the time they get to Sevastopol Station, it has been overrun by an alien, by a, an alien, a xenomorph. And this is never so, good, by yeah. the way. So the actual, the game action is your Amanda Ripley trying to not get killed on Sevastopol Station. Valid. <laughs> because in addition to it's the xenomorph running around, there's also the, the androids they have on the station are malfunctioning and killing people. And there's, and everybody's like in complete panic mode. I just want to say that and, after seeing all of the original films mm -hmm. and reading a lot of the fiction that came out of it, now the game, yeah. 
Whalen Industries need to be sued for their Android manufacturing because they suck at it. These particular aliens aren't Whalen Dutani. Oh, Androids. good because they're, Whalen, they're from, uh, a different, Whalen a different company Androids need to be on permanent yeah. recall. They yeah. suck at yeah. making Androids. Oh, Bishop was okay. But, um, uh, the the novel that I wrote is about two thirds a novelization of the game action. Oh wow! The other third is Ripley family backstory. It's oh. flashbacks to basically Amanda's childhood, both before Ripley went on the Nostromo and after. So we get a lot of Ellen's life also before yeah. the first movie. We see her on a couple of her previous assignments, and uh, her raising, you know, raising being a mother to yeah. Amanda, and then. Afterward, Amanda growing up as a teenager and a young adult, uh, with her step, with her jackass and, and, and her stepfather. I, and if I remember correctly, too, uh, I mean, not only like her mom is missing, obviously, but yeah. by the time she's like in her 11. So as she grows yeah. up as a teenager, at that point, uh, Waylon had, had pretty much pinned the accident on the crew. Well, they didn't, at this point, they yeah. didn't know what happened. All they know is that it's missing. It's missing. There's no, yeah. Nobody has any yeah, details. Yeah, because that would suck. You um, growing up, and your mom's like, she's the one that blew up that ship out no, there. No, that, that, that is not the case. Oh okay. god, because that right would now really, it's just that's it's just a the shitty, great unknown. That's nobody, a really shitty teenage. Nobody years. knows. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, they're pretty crappy anyway for her, but uh, for other reasons. But um, so it follows her life leading up to that. Awesome, um, man. And and the difficulties she had. Now you've done so. uh, licensed fiction for Orphan Black. I mean, what what are what are, what are about thirty five different writing? licensed universes I've worked That's in. That's uh, The one I've written the most in is Star Trek. I did uh-huh. quite a bit of Star Trek uh, in the early part of uh, the two thousands, and um, and I did I did a I did a coffee table book for Orphan Black a couple years ago called Classified Clone Report. It came out right when the show ended. Oh yeah. And it was a compilation of material that uh, Delphine Cormier had put together about Clone Club. Awesome. Uh, that was that was a lot of fun to do. It was a lot wow. of different little things, reports, emails, letters, memos. Oh. Newspaper articles, magazine articles, Super interviews, cool. text messages, stuff. When you get to be a licensed writer in these universes, I mean, you really are the ultimate fan fictionalist because you get to take something you love sort of. I, yeah. and just, and have license to stay in our world. Yeah. Now go. Yeah. And it's that's, fun. is that, is that a cool thing? Oh, yeah, I love I mean, it. It's, yeah. it's, it's fun getting to write characters that, I mean, it's not always, there are some things that Because a lot of writers like to sit a, down and do like a short story real quick, as is my fanfic, right? You get to say, you get handed the license and say, go, have fun, play in our sandbox. Pretty much. Some of them have been, you know, just basic one and done stories that take place uh-huh. between episodes or between movies or whatever. Some have been more intense. I've gotten to actually work with a couple of showrunners on things. Um, I collaborated with Rockney O'Bannon, uh, on the Farscape comic that we oh, did. Oh, yeah. Uh, from awesome. Studios back about 10 years ago. And, uh. Um, when they, when they let you play in their sandbox, do you get to expand the universe a little bit? It varies from license to license and project to project. Uh-huh. Uh, there's a bunch of Star Trek, uh, books that I did that did continue the stories after the particular version of the franchise ended. Um, there's been actually an extended, the, the Star Trek novel since about 2001 or so, all the 24th century ones have had a more or less coherent, uh, storyline moving forward mm-hmm. with the next well, generation. Well, companies are more controlled Voyager. now than they used to be too. Yeah, that's part of yeah. it. Yeah. Part of it is that uh, there's a lot a lot of the people who are producing TV shows now grew up reading tie-in fiction. So mm-hmm. they're more amenable to it. There's a lot I mean, there's some companies where they don't care, they just rubber stamp it or they micromanage the hell out of it. Um, others are more participatory. One actually uh that I did about uh 4 years ago uh when when they brought Heroes back for the Heroes Reborn mini yes. series on yep. NBC, they also did six novellas. Oh, that okay. tied into the series. Oh, I didn't know And those. I got to work yeah. directly with the showrunner on that. That never happens. Usually, because the showrunner's usually too busy running the TV running the show. show. Yeah. Um, uh, most of the time, you're, you're dealing with somebody in the licensing department at best. What's your dream? Um, what, what is your dream place to work? If somebody said, hey, you can write in this universe now, mm. what would be your dream universe um, to step into? There's, there's a few. Is there a place um, where your mind has kind of already gone and I mean, built most, most of the ones I'd want that, that currently... Uh, I'd want to are, are ones where there's no like there's no chance of there yeah. being one because it's it's stuff that's been off the air for a long time. Like I'd love to do a homicide life on the street novel, but that that ship is that's pretty much sailed. Yeah. There were actually two of them. Uh, Jerome Preisler, who's a mystery writer, wrote those. Uh huh. Um, but uh, the otherwise, I mean, there's a few. I, I pitched a Battlestar Galactica novel back when the new show was on the air, but that that wound up not happening. Um, and there are others floating around right now. I I I've uh, I'd like to do. But. He's going to hold that card up. That's our shut up. We've been visiting too long card. Okay. I like to ignore him, but when he starts wiggling it, I have to say yeah. something. So, all right. We've been hanging out here with Keith DeCandido, 
the author of Alien Isolation and many other and sundry. He's got a lot of his own regular fiction. He's got a lot of tie-in fiction. you got to check him out on the web. We put links down below. Go on over. No, the links are over here. They're down there? They're somewhere. I don't There's somewhere. There There's are links. Somewhere on your screen is Magic a Magic has happened between the yes. time him and I talked and you saw this. Find those links. Click on those links. Check out these books. Support our great artist community. We're going to say thank you to our partners and friends, Famous Faces and Funnies, Space Coast Comics, Indie Originals, and Indie Con 2019. Our great friend, Josh Bauer at J. Bauer Art for all the set art here. This is fantastic. Our friends at Krypton Radio, Foxwood Wine Company, and Yvonne Mason at Author Chain Radio. They share our videos all the world, on the World Wide Web. We hope you will, too. Remember, subscribe, log on, tune in, and see who we're hanging with next. Authors, filmmakers, producers, anybody that has anything to do with creating independent stuff, comic book authors, musicians, make sure you take advantage of the 2019 Indie Originals Live Talent Competition going on now at www.indieoriginalslive.com. This is your exclusive opportunity to become an official award-winning independent creator to use that in your marketing. Enter today at www.indieoriginalslive.com Now on Amazon.com I coin from author Jeremy Mosby It's an alternate reality and the leader of the planet I coin is none other than Benjamin Franklin When corrupt officials threaten not only I coin but the earth as well an unlikely chosen one Jeremy must face dark foes to save the earth and I coin alike author Jeremy Mosby takes readers on a superhero's adventure through this compelling and imaginative alternate universe get I coin on amazon.com today now on amazon.com war calls love cries a civil war novel by Mark Berry Isaac Wells is an innocent farm boy living in upstate New York his dreams are shattered by a treacherous brother and the onset of a devastating civil war. War Calls and Love Cries is a fast-moving historical narrative. It is an emotional roller coaster ride and a riveting must-read book that you will think about and talk about for a long time to come. War Calls and Love Cries is the kind of book you will cherish for a lifetime on Amazon.com today. Best-selling and award-winning author of true crime and crime fiction, Yvonne Mason is back with a brand new book, The Pink Canary a book that delves into the life of a drag queen and a marvelous whodunit. You can find this and all of Yvonne's other works on Amazon.com or find Yvonne Mason on Facebook and Twitter. He's gonna kill me. Buy your copy of Pink Canary now. Hello, World Wide Web. Welcome back to the Hanging With Web Show. I'm GW Pometer. Thank you so much for logging on and tuning in, maybe clicking on a link or Googling us or however you got here. We're really glad you're here. Now, hit subscribe and the little bell. Give it a ding. That way, every time I drop an episode, every single weekday, you can come back and see it. And then you won't miss out on anything. We got artists, authors, filmmakers, musicians, cosplayers, creative minds of all kinds. And we're here at MegaCon 2019, day four, the last day. We're hanging out right now with comic creator Alex Bonilla. Hey, hey. Alex, man, Thanks. good to see you again. Likewise, man. Awesome. What we got up here in the chair, we got the comic is Antioch, mm -hmm. right? Yep. In the chair right now, we also have Hanging with Web Show favorite and alumnus, Laura Nettinger, who is coming in as Incinerate. That's right. Yes. That's a powerful... <laughs> See, she's got it happening here. Yes. Alex, man, how's it been? How's the last year treated you? It's been good. It's been yeah. Good. Some, some up and down, but you know what? You got to keep on moving forward. And I'm have to show my fans the updates and progress that we've done with our comic book. I got it right here in my hand. Oh, he's got like, it right in his hot, it's right off the presses, guys. You're going to get like a huge peak. What do we got here, man? Let's take okay. a look at this. All right. What is so, anti? Remember, you guys remember last year? We're gonna get, put a link down below to last year's interview when we talked to Alex about all the stuff he was working on. Mm -hmm. Antioch. Okay, yep. what do we got here? So, Let's see. This is our cover. Okay. Of our first issue. Wow! Yeah. Look at that. And now, let me explain the concept. The, where my comic book is gonna be a little bit different outside the box. Uh huh. We're gonna have live action pictures for all of our covers, most of our covers. Wow. So this is our comic book guy. This is right here. Okay. Comic book guy. And of course, this is Antioch and comic book guy, the beginning. And it starts right there from his beginning. Wow, and you're doing live action shots for these covers, huh? Yes, we are. Oh, wow, that's amazing. Different. Yeah. Now then, we're also doing, there's more. 
Okay. But not yet. There's more. There's more. Okay. Also, we're going to have like centerfolds. Okay. So we're going to start off with incinerate. Incinerate. Okay? Which she also makes her debut in issue one. Dude, that guy is so unlucky. He really thought he was doing great. Yeah. yeah. And he wasn't any. Oh. There's a video of it. This is a video of incinerate. <laughs> what this is called, as you can see, delivering the kiss of death. This is why I don't walk up to chicks in parks. That's right. Yeah. Look, 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 look. He's a pilot. Now, incinerate here. Let me just explain about incinerate here. Incinerate happens to be the sister of Chivalric, which you met last week. Yes. Yeah. Well, last year we met last Chivalric. Year, as Chivalric. And they form what's called the Sinister Sisters. Okay? And then basically, she's, as you could see, okay? Yeah. All right? Unlike Chivalric, she delivers the kiss of death, where she just kisses her victim to death. And all that's left is just ashes, as you could see in this shot. He shouldn't okay. have messed with me. Yep. No doubt. No <laughs> doubt. Okay. So basically, she. Do also... you have a cousin? I think I might have dated. I'm not sure. <laughs> a pile of ashes. Nothing left after the kiss. Wow. Okay. okay. So basically, then after you see her uh, this, and then also she creates uh, fire blasts and fire bombs using her hands. But her main arsenal is uh, the kiss of death, and she has a catchphrase when she does this. It's all, come on, baby, let me light up your fire. Every, I'm waiting for them to get it. It's the okay. All right. Man, Lauren, how did you hook up with Alex? Um, I, I don't know. We just got in contact. I thought it was a really cool idea. And I was like, heck yeah, I want to like kiss What do you think death. of Incinerate? <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of Incinerate? Well, one of my favorite characters is Poison Ivy. So I uh -huh. kind of think of her like a fiery Poison Ivy. Fiery so like, Poison yeah, Ivy. Yeah, because she kisses people to poison them. Yeah. And I kiss people and... You know, burn wow, them into flame. fantastic. I mean, what else do we have? Fire. We got more. We got okay. but wait, there's, there's more. more. It slices, it dices. <laughs> there's, more. there's more. We're also doing posters, as you can see. We're doing a poster of Comic Book Guy. Comic as book well guy. as the rest of these girls. Awesome characters. Like here's fantastic. one a potential poster, our centipede of Incinerate in action. Awesome. Okay. Awesome. And of course your favorite. Shiverly, Shiverly. Oh, look at this! This is Shiverly from last year's show. Yep. I'm gonna scan these so we can, you know, do like post production stuff. I, I love. Watch what happens to the director when I say we'll fix this in post. Yeah. See, I love it when I do that. <laughs> and now the moment everyone's been waiting for. Oh, what do we is got? the illustration a page of our illustration? So it's a sneak peek, sneak exclusively, peek. exclusively. For my Oh, man. The Hanging With Web Show exclusive. That doesn't happen very often, but I love it when it does. All right. I wish that we had a drum roll, but we don't. So, there you go. Oh, look All at right, this. Now, this artwork was done by Wyatt Garland. He's our artist. Wyatt Garland, yes. Wyatt Garland. Thank you. Okay. As you can see, this is like Incinerate right here. In awesome. Action. Now, Incinerate. And she's so gleeful with the fire. Yes. Basically, she said, she's getting ready to set up. Um, this is Aaron Freeman to his death, unfortunately. And after mm -hmm. you have the mysterious boss man, okay? And like I talked about last year about diversity, you see both of them speaking Russian. And here's the translation right here. Wow, that's so cool. basically the mysterious boss man, I got his inspiration basically from the 80s cartoon, Dr. Claw from Inspector uh -huh, Gadget. Yep, yep. We only saw his hands and heard his voice. So that's the same concept you're gonna see with the boss man. The boss man also speaks different languages too. So not just Russian and English, but Spanish, um, Asian, and more. So, wow. So you're yeah. going to see different. Yeah, yeah so that is right fan there. That's fantastic. And now, thank you, Wyatt. So. I did, yeah, Wyatt. Man, awesome job. Okay. okay so we're going to do this year's interview a little bit different because I understand uh, last year they got to know you personally. Mm -hmm. And we talked a lot about your career and how you came into this. Okay. Yep. This year, you brought a whole cast I of did. characters with you. I did. So, to continue our theme of diversity. That's right. So what we're going to do is we're going to have uh, Alex de describe and tell us about his characters as we see them here on the show. Mm -hmm. So you guys have met Lauren in Cinerate, okay? You've also met Lauren in her many incarnations here on the Hanging With Web Show because she's an There's amazing cosplayer. <laughs> Look that up. We're going to drop a link down below for you, Lauren. Okay. And for, of course, all, all the work you're doing with Incinerate, mm -hmm. okay? But... We're going to have Lauren switch out, and then you'll tell us who's coming in next, okay? okay? So, so, let's have All seat. right. Okay, now this one is my one of my favorites. Okay, come on in and, and have a seat there, and we've got a mic for you. So, 
You can tell tell us. Let, we'll let her tell us about the character, and you can tell us anything she leaves out. How's that? Okay. And you want to do that the other way? I do the other way. Okay. Do it the other way. <laughs> okay. So this is very important. This character is this is her debut at MegaCon, and this is uh, she's called Electricidad. Electricidad. Electricidad, which is electricity. Okay. So basically, Electricidad is a bad guy, just like Incinerate. Okay. And then basically, she generates like up to a million votes. The cool part about uh, Electricidad is she's is the only villain in my universe that has come closest to killing comic book guy, comic book guy right here. So awesome. She's come close. She also is, uh, absorbs bio energy. So like she she stands next to you close enough, she could absorb Draws your energy, my energy as well okay. as energy from the power plants. She's also a living lightning rod. So if she's running low and she sees clouds, she just sends a burst of lightning, and then it tracks to her. And she becomes all powerful again. All right. Well, I need my lights there, Sparky. So, so take it easy. <laughs> all right. So, what drew you to doing this character? Uh, Alex? Basically, I do a lot of modeling, um, but I like anything epic and new, unique. And so, uh, being able to be part of a comic book lets me take my art and turn it into action. That's and so, <laughs> yeah, that is that's fantastic. like the best part about it. I'm definitely excited. This will be a first, but. Um, I'm, and it, coming from from uh, straight modeling over here into doing this, what yes. is uh, was there any were there any unique challenges? Um, probably in the poses. In you the know poses. what I mean? You have to. I think the more you do them, the more it looks more realistic. Oh, you gotta get that action pose. Yes, right? the action yeah. poses. Yes, and so usually it's couture and different things, yeah. but learning how to pose the right way, um, getting to know your character because you're not just. You know, in, you know something. It's for not. Me. It's not a snapshot. It's yes. a whole, yeah, sequential yes. art. I'm going to so. carry on with it. She's part of me. So, That's yes. awesome. That is fantastic. Very Thank happy. you so much. And, and uh, when you're not electricidad, did I get that right? Electricidad. All right. When you're not, uh, you, you're a model, so yes. you model other things too. Uh, do you have a website or someplace where people can find um, you yes, online? Yes, I have an Instagram. It's m dot and I have Facebook. Um, it's Mercedes Cerruti. Yes. Awesome. Well, make sure we have that in the show. We're going to drop those links. Below, yep. and thank you for supporting awesome. Alex. Thank You're you. a great artist. Yes. So, <laughs> we want to also give credit to our makeup artist, Chris, uh, Chris E. Ministries, Mysteries, excuse me, and outdoors. He's done an excellent job with all my characters. So, uh, what is that like to see such a wide, vast network of characters now standing in front of you live? It's a dream come true. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> yes. Alexis Adah, thank you so yes, much for hanging so out much. with us. Alex, who's next? Okay, Who do we got Kuna. next? All right. You mask. Okay. Okay. So now, this is Kunai, Ninja Warrior. Yes. Okay. Now this is one of my favorite characters. Now before we get started, I hate this guy. Look at his abs. <laughs> this guy right here. Look at the abs, the chest, the whole nine yards. Oh, <laughs> see now he's got to show off. Okay. So now who? What, which character his is this? His name is Kunai, Kunai. Ninja Warrior. Ninja now, Warrior. Okay. I'm going to love telling the story about this. Oh, okay. I love this. Okay. First off, you see all the. Tattoos. These are badges that he's earned over the years. Okay. Okay. Now, how does a ninja warrior earn a badge? Basically, he has to go through some tests, and after this from his sensei, and then once he passes it, they just basically do like the old kung fu, where they just burn it into your skin, uh -huh. and that's what happened to him. Okay. So he, he passed a lot of tests. Yes, he has. Yeah. Hey, he passed an extra one too. Yeah. Well, I'll get to that story okay, later. Okay. Yeah. So then now, so Kunai happens to be. A master of all forms of martial arts, as well as weapons. Show him your weapon, my friend. This is one of his weapons right here. So, all so, right, that's 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 pretty badass. Okay. You gotta admit it. Yeah. So that's one of his weapons. He's also he studies he does he studies the teachings of Sun Tzu, okay, as well as he's known as a man of few words, but a man of action. He loves he loves the phrase "kill or be killed." He loves what's called the thrill, the hunt, and the strategy to kill, as he calls victim his victims prey. So basically, Kunai is unstoppable when he gets to me. Now then, the scar you see here uh -huh. happens to be from one of his nemesis in the martial arts world called Spice, which is a uh, she's down the road. We'll, hopefully, one day we'll show her as well. Okay, okay. And also, he has another one called Swift Kick, who's like the good ninja. So basically, that's, ninja. so basically, there's a main thing between Spice and him. Spice did this cheap shot on him because she wanted to steal one of his weapons, and then she realized that Kunai was overpowering for her, overpowering, 
So then she just took a cheap shot. Then after she ruined his perfect face, so now he hunts. He wants to kill her. Wow. Uh, Mr. Spice. So. Wow, fantastic. So kunai. Kunai. Okay, young man. Okay. Uh, okay, so what? how did you get involved? How did you become kunai? Well, basically, Alex contacted me, um, Model Mayhem, and uh, he is looking for an Asian model. Okay. And um, he found me play this character. It's perfect fit for this character. I'm fit, and uh, I also live by, I love all these fighting and martial arts stuff oh, like that. Oh, okay. <laughs> Fantastic. That's awesome. Um, what is your favorite part about this character? I think this character is a man of action. I love the man with actions, not just talking, but action. Also, he is unstoppable, and he is ruthless. He kill all these victims. That would do it. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, we get ready for the next one yes. to come on in. On your way out, Kunai, I want you to stop in front of the camera right about here where, where we are. And okay. strike a pose. Strike show a pose. us that man of action. Show, show that okay. man of action. All right. Okay. Just strike a pose here right there. All right. And there we go. That's it. <laughs> nice. All right. Well, let's bring in. Yes. What are we bringing in next? We're bringing Semilla. Semilla. All right. Semilla. 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 All right. Another one with the chiseled abs and th- this is going to give me an inferiority complex. This is why I wear vests. Okay. okay. So, oh my lord. Yes. So, Samia. Okay. Okay. Tell me about this. Is this is this is one another? One I'm of my green favorites. with envy. Well, he's green too. Wait for it. Okay. Now, okay. <laughs> I'm very proud of this because both electricidad, Samia, is probably from my background, the Latin background. I'm very happy to promote that as well. Absolutely. Besides everybody else. Yeah. But Samia happens he used to be an evil person. He used to be an eco terrorist. And then after he remained, you know, he battled Comic Book Guy until one day Comic Book Guy saved his life. And he asked him why. And then after his Comic Book Guy just basically said, All life matters, no matter if you're good or evil. And then that made him to think and then he started changing his way of thinking. So now he fights with Comic Book Guy in the side of good. With his pup with his staff, basically he puts people under control to do the wrongs they did against nature. He communicates to nature as well. So basically, uh, Samia uh, is Swamp Thing. I'm sorry, you're retired. Samia is taking over. So. so yeah, so between Swamp Thing and this, this is like Poison Ivy's like Goody Two Shirts cousin, right? Yeah, ex-boyfriend. Ex-boyfriend. Because she, he's out there doing good stuff now, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay, man. So uh, tell me, Samia. 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 See? Samia. What he said. Samia. He said it three times. I can't say it once, so you figure that out. Okay, so who are you and how did you find how did you land in this crazy man? <laughs> oh, I met Alex um a while ago. Yeah. He met me yeah. through uh, Oh, we I'm gotta sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You didn't hear any of that I because need the mic. Well, sorry that again. was all of the critical details about his growing up. As long as as far as you know. Okay, so who so are you said, and how did you get involved? I grew involved up like in that. We're going to leave it there. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> no, Alex, Alex, you met me um, a couple months through my, yeah. through my website. My yep. um, and he contacted me. He told me about what he's, his plan is to bring the Latin environment to the comic book. I've always been grew up with comic books and growing up in Puerto Rico. Love it. I love his idea and got into it. And now we're here trying to make a... Latin get into the comic book. I mean, you're more than trying, man. You're doing it. Yeah. You were living the dream here, man. And what? one of the things I'm happy about is, like, for example, especially with Electricidad and Semilla, they're the, this is their debut at MegaCon. You know, Incinerate and Kunai have made their debuts before, but not these two. That's so. fantastic. That's awesome. Congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, welcome to a crazy making yeah. world. Guys, we have to wrap it up. We have yeah. been hanging with... Alex Bonilla and his cast of amazing cosplay models and characters from the world of Comic Book Man, from the world of Alex's latest creation. We're going to drop all the links down below. Alex, again, man, thank you so much for being here. Gracias, amigos de YouTube. All right. We're going to say thanks to our partners and friends, Famous Faces and Funnies, Space Coast Comics, Indie Originals, Jay Bauer Art. 
Krypton Radio, Foxwood Wine Company, because these chairs are much comfortable than yes. last year, yes, right? Yes, it is true. All right. <laughs> Off the Chain Radio with author Yvonne Mason. Thank you guys for sharing our videos. We hope that you will share them, too. Remember, stay logged on, stay tuned in, and see who we're hanging with All next. Right. The Right of Wines. One boy, one right. And a world of deadly secrets that could change the course of history forever. It's time for The Right of Wands by Mackenzie Floor. When a horrible fate reveals itself during the Right of Wands ceremony, Mirda must find a way to change his destiny. Forbidden from revealing the future, he is granted a wand and magical powers in order to save himself and those he loves. But Mirda is not the only one with secrets. The Right of Wands by Mackenzie Floor, available on Amazon.com now. Discarded by Michael J. Allen. In a world where magic is sold like designer coffee, unknown forces have corrupted it, and it's killing people. Now, an unlikely hero emerges. A homeless ex-con creating spells out of a trash can is the only one who can save the city. Michael J. Allen's Discarded, available on Amazon.com. Every year, tens of millions of people flock to Florida for its sunny beaches and world-famous tourist attractions. Most never learn about the strange and unusual locations just off the beaten path. From the UFOs of Gulf Breeze to Robert the Haunted Doll in Key West, learn about the myths, monsters, and legends from the dark side of the Sunshine State. With author Mark Muncy and illustrator Carrie Schultz in their books, Eerie Florida and Freaky Florida from the History Press. Find them at eerieflorida.com or wherever books are sold. This is Cosplay Michael with the Hanging Earth Club Show. I want to tell you about my friends at Embellished Effects in Orlando, Florida. They've got makeup, costumes, and props for all of your costume needs. And the team at Embellished Effects is helpful and friendly. Embellished Effects is one of my favorite places, and I know it will be yours too. I'll see you there. Or go to EmbellishedEffects.com and remember, cosplay is for everyone. Hello, World Wide Web. Welcome back to the Hanging With Web Show. I'm GW Pomisher. Thank you so much for logging on, tuning in, clicking, Googling. There's like a million ways to get here now. Yeah, there including is. Including getting lost on the internet. Mm-hmm. And I, I hope I have an ad on Pornhub or something, so when they click on it, they end up here. You fall down the rabbit hole. Just fall down the rabbit hole. Right. Yeah. Anyway, however you got here, we're glad that you're here. Hit subscribe so you can come here on purpose next time. Click the little bell and you'll know exactly when a new episode drops. Because we've got amazing stuff, man. We've got artists, authors, filmmakers, musicians, cosplayers. I had a whole cast of a comic book, like a uh, that's a, a cosplay cast of a comic book in here just a minute ago. Yeah, it's absolutely. Crazy. I saw that. It's yeah, it's insane. We're here at MegaCon 2019. We're wrapping up the show. The last day. We're hanging out with hanging with web show alumnus, the host of the Geese Watchtower, the host, uh, one of the hosts of Two Men and a Mouse, the fantasy author. Above handicap bowler, professional wrestler. <laughs> this guy does everything, and he does it well. I don't and bowl. I don't like him very much because of that. <laughs> but I let him sit down because he looks tired. He's been doing things well all over MegaCon all weekend. It's been a busy weekend. It has been a busy weekend. How you doing, Kevin? Uh, thank you Kevin very J. much. Kevin J. Kessler, me. by the way, everybody. Kevin J. Kessler, fantasy author, uh, responsible for the Rossinanti series. And, wait a minute, the card has new stuff. Yes, it does have new stuff. Why does my card have new stuff I don't know about? Tell me about what I don't know about. Um, I did a, so about um, two year, a year or two ago, a year and a half ago or yeah. something like that, my publisher, Lavish Publishing, they wanted to do a, um, a winter box set. So they were like, hey, Kevin, do you have a, a, winter, a story about winter that can go in this box set? And I was like, ah, I don't have one, but let me sit down. And so, so I started writing about like a fantasy setting where it's winter, and this book just kind of fell out of me. It's, uh, it's, uh, I have it right here. It's Winters of Elnora, Birth now of the Dark Angel. Now you know Angel. why I don't like him. This book just sort of fell out of me. I said. mean, it's it's short. It's it's a novella. Look, the rest of us are doing this, and he's like, it's falling out. It's a novel, but it's not. Yeah. So it follows. Tell us the story. What, what so is this? It follows a young girl named Elnora. She's a beggar orphan on the streets of Kailum, which is the city of light. It's like the the pristine, perfect um, society okay. ruled over by the Luxian Order, which is like essentially it's the organized religion of this world. Um, and it, uh, but you know, much like most things, while the city may be pristine and shiny on the outside, into the upper level there are 
you know, there's always a seedy, there's underbelly. a seedy underbelly, and yeah. she has been a victim of it. It's very dark. It's a dark fantasy. Lots of adult themes. Uh, there are themes of abuse in it as well. Wow. Um, so she becomes. So she goes from being beggar orphan to being taken as the apprentice of the Dark Angel, who is the sorcerer who embodies all of the dark magic in the world. And this book follows four winters throughout her life. So she starts as a child, awesome. and ends up as a woman, and it shows her rising up and through her apprenticeship to the Dark Angel. It shows the rise of the the greatest dark sorceress the world will ever know, and it shows how she becomes the the dark angel herself. So it's wow. Win- yep, Winters of Elnora, birth of the dark angel. Winters of Elnora, birth of the dark angel. And I'm and I'm working on a sequel actually as we speak called Nice. A, yep, it's called Apprentice of Elnora, heir to the dark angel. See, he can write and speak at the same time so. as we speak. He's doing the other. It's falling out of him. <laughs> this one's not falling out quite as uh, as easily. Huh? Quite as easy. No, I've been very, very busy lately. There's been so much going on. I'm yeah. working on I'm working on three books at the same time right now. I'm doing um, the Ross and Nancy series is complete, but I am actually doing a second uh, saga of it. Okay. So I'm working on that. I'm working on the Alnora sequel, and I'm working on a new series called the John Merlin saga, which is my first foray into contemporary dark fantasy. So Ooh. yeah, that is wow. Be, uh, yeah. A little more challenging. Um, you know what? Not not as challenging because I'm really? working within the confines of an already established universe. Our world, our universe. That's true. I don't have to explain what a car is because everybody knows what a car is. I could just say there's so, a car. Been, you, know? you know, I was going to say, though, as much as that gives you a structure to a bones to build on, yes. it also gives you a confinement. It gives you a confined space. It, it, it does. I mean, I had to figure out how magic works in this universe, obviously. Um, I have big plans for this universe. Like, I'm doing the... So I'm writing John Merlin the way I would write a television series. Um, each season is going to be... They're, it's going to be put into volumes. She's so a each, modern... The modern fantasy, or the... How do I... I don't even know how to word that without being, you know, doubled and doubling up. The modern, modern fantasy writers, right... Um, there's something that has been altered in the last uh, maybe two decades, mm-hmm. and that is, you know, two, before about 20, 25 years ago, modern fantasy writers, the biggest challenge was fitting magic, mystery, monsters into the modern world and always, always, always keeping that a secret. Well, my, and that was so hard to do yeah. that about 25 years ago, authors just stopped. And they were mm-hmm. like, whenever we do this, there's been a moment, there's been a change. Even when you go to, like, True Blood. There's a moment when everybody knows about it because it's just so hard to keep these big things a secret. What are you working on? Are you working well, on doing it that way? Or so or, or? With, with Merlin, I'm making it episodic like a television show. Uh-huh. Um, then I'm also going – I have ideas for other series that all exist within the same universe featuring other superpowered individuals. And eventually I will bring them all together as my own superhero universe. And do a team up book, so that's nice. kind of the idea. That's awesome. Now, the cool thing about uh, Merlin is right now I've, I have the first Merlin book is done. It's like in the can. I'm just making edits on it. It's called Blood Ties. It's vampires. It's sorcerers. It's great. The second one I'm currently writing is called The Disciples of Darkness, which is where John Merlin goes up against the Dark Angel of that world. Oh, so cool. I, I view my books as a multiverse, and in every multiverse, the one constant is that there is always a dark angel, and that goes back to me as a professional wrestler, which is something I've been doing since I was 17 years old. Um, my character is the dark angel, Vincent Valentine, so it's so me kind of just... crossing the streams a little bit. That's nice. Yeah. That's a great place to draw inspiration from, though. Yep. Um... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, so... Uh, I, I love it when behind the camera they're wittier than we are. I know, yeah. It happens she, once in a while. She, she just got us good. Yeah. <laughs> so, but wait, when you're not writing, you're a podcast. I mean, not, yeah. you're not a podcaster. A podcaster is a hobbyist that just podcasts and they're like, hey, me and my bros are in my basement. You have, uh, you have multiple podcasts that you put together, one of which is one of the most popular Disney podcasts uh, out there on iTunes. I, I looked it up. I'm telling you the truth. Uh, <laughs> it's, uh, when it, it comes it, out. I mean, it I does it's well something for that you can't do all the time, but I, when you I do feel, it... And I feel terrible about that because when I used to When you do it, be, man, they, it used they to be, love it. It used to be every week, nonstop, you know, never missed a week. And then, 
you know, I, I started my own business. I started, life kind of, you know, I started putting books out. Life kind of got in the way. And I'm really trying very, very hard to get two men in the mouse of Walt Disney World podcast back up to where it was, where it could come out at least two to three times a month. Awesome. Um, and of course, when it comes out, they go, they, they want it. Yeah. People yeah, love, it, and I love doing it. And yeah. my, my, my co-host Peter Mandel and I, we have a great time doing it. We, we've always said like, we can do this forever. That never run out of things to talk about. I mean, I, he, he's up in Jersey. I moved down here to Orlando. I'm right here by the parks. Um, I, I love it. And I love, uh, I love bringing the, and sharing my passion for theme parks and Walt Disney World with, um, our fans who we call the Mousers. They, they've always been so wonderful and supportive. I just feel so bad that I haven't been able to provide When you that first level started that, did content. you have any idea that there were going to be so many of them? No. Them? No, absolutely not. I started about five podcasts at the same time. Uh, when I started the White Dragon Podcast Network about five years ago, uh-huh. we had a wrestling podcast. We had um, we had the, we had the Disney show. We we had a sports show, which I wasn't on. Uh, we had a movie. Um, our Dave Dave Swan, my co-host on the Geek Watchtower, he had one called um, uh, Silver Screen Spoilers, which was all about movie reviews. Um, and the one that you know, the other ones, they would all get like five downloads or something like that the first day. We put two men in the mouse up. The next day, I looked and I was like. I called Pete. I'm like, we, we got 50 downloads last night on one episode. And he was like, what? And then it just, the, the snowball kept rolling until we got up to our best month. We had 40,000 downloads for Two Men in the Mouse. That's amazing. And we've interviewed the voice of Goofy twice. I actually just had the pleasure of sitting down with him to talk about the Kingdom Hearts series. Awesome. Uh, we had a wonderful interview, him and I. Bill Farmer, he's a, a truly amazing, wonderful individual um, who, who I'm, I'm, I'm blessed to have been able to speak to twice. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's, it's, Two Men in the Mouse is a dream come true for me because it gives me the opportunity to share my passion for something that I've loved since I was a child with other people. And and the fact that people enjoy it is just a huge bonus. It is because that's what art is all about. You're going to write. Yeah. You you don't have a choice. Yeah. It's not what you do. It's who you are. Yep. Yeah. You're going to want to talk about Disney. You're going to want to talk about you're passionate about DC and and movies and, and television. You're passionate about these things. You love storytelling. Yeah. So you're going to talk about them no matter what. Absolutely. Success in doing so, that's like the hugest big cherry on top. Absolutely. It's amazing, right? Yeah. yeah, well, and now I've added yet another hat onto my head. After five years of inactivity, I've gone back to the world of professional wrestling with UWA Elite, which is a wrestling territory up in New Jersey run by my friend Dave Swan, who co-hosts the Geek Watchtower. Mm-hmm. Um, he, uh, he brought me back. I'm flying up to New Jersey once a month to you know, compete in the ring again. And wow. So being able to step into the Dark Angel Vincent Valentine again, being able to be that character again, being able to perform in front of a live crowd again, it's a rush that, yeah, I, would say, I was so nervous the first time we went out there. I had this whole promo in my head planned out from beginning to end. I never script myself, and I scripted myself for that one. But I hit the ring and so nervous, stood up. Suddenly I was the character again. The script went out of my head, and I just flew off the cuff. And, and cut a three minute promo that knew there was no stumbling, there were no ums or uhs. You just it was felt just it. it was I was him again and he's a much he's a different side of me. And so it just it felt it was like putting on that old that old jacket again and it fits like a glove, you know. Well and you know and a, lot, and a lot of folks, especially we talk a lot, you and I together and, and about the arts. Yes. And whether it's T V movies, books, whatever, the arts in general. I don't think a lot of people understand what an art form wrestling is. It's athleticism, but it's also an art. It's storytelling on a in, a, in, a, on, in an athletic yes. forum, um, and that is hard to do. Professional wrestling is the single most prolific theatrical art form I've ever. And I've done like I've been in uh, I've been, I've done film, I've done TV, I've done um, you know stage, I've done a lot of stage, but wrestling is my. My first love of performing. It's, it's an amazing. I love and the UWA Elite has such amazing production value. I mean, if you've never checked it out, you have to. There's the uh, UWA Elite.com. They've got the UWA Elite I, Network. I've up checked there. it out through the internet now, yeah. thanks to you. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it is. I, I, I'm not. I was not growing up a huge wrestling fan. Mm-hmm. Um, and but as an adult in my middle age, I, I started checking out some different things because people would talk to me or we yeah. had people on the show or whatever that were wrestlers. I, I'll check it out. I'll look. It is an amazing art form. There's 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 drama, there's there's, it, there's a lot of details and... in the storytelling. There's comedy, and it's all wrapped up as you're trying to do these amazing athletic things for the show. And you know what? It's funny whether whether it's Winters of Elnor or whether it's Rossin- the Rossinetti series. Um, whenever I write combat, 
people really seem to like it. They're like, wow, your fight scenes pop. You know, I really like reading your fight scenes. Well, that's because of wrestling. I learned how to tell a story through combat. I learned how to take an audience to the ups and the downs of, of back and forth you know, uh, combat physically. Yeah, exactly. And so wow. like, so when I write a fight scene, you know, whether it be fantastical or more down to earth or magical or whatnot, I actually get up and like, I work it out to myself where like, okay, you see Kevin sitting at his desk, right? And he's all of a sudden he's like, okay, wait, no, okay, I actually wait. get up. Like yeah. I actually get up and I'm like, okay, he's going to throw this punch. He's going to go, you know, like, wow. and I, I actually like, like work out the logistics of how it will work. Because I book it, like, in my head, like it's a wrestling match. Well, it helps, too, because you can't get it wrong. Yeah, yeah. right. But well, you can get it wrong. Yeah. It, it, it definitely... But, I mean, when you're doing that, though, it's yeah. hard to get it wrong. Because yeah, yeah. Because you know what it would be like if you had gotten it wrong. You get hit in the head with something. Of course. It's a bad idea. Yes. All right, guys, we have to wrap it up. She's going to flash that card at mm-hmm. us. You know, behind the camera here, and Kevin and I are getting used to this. They do it to us on the radio. Right. They do it to us on the camera. Mm-hmm. And whenever you get a good conversation going, all of a sudden, they're like, hey, guys, shut up. Yeah. No, See? absolutely. I, we're going to thank Fitch. our partners and our friends at Famous Faces and Funnies, Rick Shea and the team over there, Space Coast Comics and Indie Originals at IndieCon 2019, Jay Bauer Art, Krypton Radio, the Foxwood Wine Company, and Yvonne Mason with Off the Chain Radio. These are the people who have been supporting the show, almost all of them, from the very beginning. We hope you will do the same thing. We've been hanging out with Kevin J. Kessler, fantasy author, podcaster, wrestler. He's a good guy. Check the links below. Go find out for yourself. All right, guys. <laughs> Stay tuned in, stay logged on, see who we're hanging with next. Murder by the Gods from author William G. Collins is available today. Murder by the Gods is a mystery thriller set in the glorious past of ancient Egypt. When the son of the Scorpion King suddenly collapses after receiving a mysterious threat from the god Seth, the prince is convinced it is the gods who are trying to kill his family. Murder by the Gods is filled with adventure and romance in a kingdom that would become known as the Land of the Pharaohs. Murder by the Gods from author William G. Collins is available on Amazon.com today. All right, everybody, welcome back to the Hanging With Web Show Radio Hour. That is about all the time we have. We are getting ready to wrap it up. Wow, what amazing, that amazing was, interviews. That was wonderful. That was fantastic. Uh, interviews right from the set with author Keith D. Candido from Alien Isolation, comic creator Alex Bonilla, and guests. That was awesome, by that the way. Was, wasn't I, it? I, I relive that every time I hear it. And fantasy author Kevin J. Kessler from the Rastanani series. Uh, guys, we've had a blast hanging out with y'all tonight. Uh, all across Krypton Radio, we hope we want to make sure that you are getting, when we wrap up the show, we want to make sure you're getting the very best of what we've got to offer. So you know what? Uh, we have been ending our shows over uh, on our podcast networks uh, across the board with The Legend of the Traveling Tardis, The Watchtower, The Indie Music Spotlight. We've been ending our shows with original music from independent musicians. But this is Krypton Radio. That's right. Oh, my god. What gosh. do you do on Krypton Radio when you want to end a show with independent music? We have a treat. We have a treat. That's right. Most notably famous for his role as the Vulcan security officer on the USS Voyager mm-hmm. out there in the Delta Quadrant is uh, actor, director, filmmaker, and guess what? Musician yes. Tim Russ. Now, Tim was, you know, gained uh, notoriety way back in the day uh, with Spaceballs. That's and right. That's man, right. Yeah, man. So, uh, but, you know, and he's worked in sci-fi and he's worked in great film and television ever since. Uh, but most notably for his role in Star Trek Voyager as the Vulcan Tuvok. I'll bet nobody knew that Tuvok could rock. And he can. So, guys, we're going to finish it up right now. Here is Lieutenant Commander Tuvok, Tim Russ, with... Doom, doom, diggity. Dick Dix is in the house, y'all.
Okay. 